Alrighty, I'm going to say without uh, any hesitation that this uh, fitting in the brake caliper will be seized <laughs> or, or something like it. You see where the pipe is? Here? Oh, wait a minute. Here. See that, that fitting? I bet it's seized in. And it'll snap the pipe anyway, so we don't really matter about that because we're going to put new ones in anyway. So what we're simply going to do is cut the pipe close to the fitting as possible. Oh look, <laughs> real, real time action, wait a minute, you can't see can you? As I cut that off, that pipe just came away. Look how thin it was. You see that? It's just way for thin. Good job it's got a hook so I can hook it on. Right, the next thing, we're going to take a hammer and and hit the top. Now the purpose of that is to shock the threads so when the threads are you know in the casting and the, the fitting they're gonna sort of bounce a little bit and that will break the rust seal. You don't necessarily need WD-40 or anything like that. I'm gonna, I forgot to get my ratchet, I'll be back in a minute. Right back again. So <clears throat> I've got myself an 11 millimeter socket, you could use 7 16 as well. I'm going to try and tap that so it's a nice tight fit you remember them in the 70s? where was that lion sleeps tonight? there we go and simply try and get this off oh, well, easy now that's a lot better than using a spanner like an open ended spanner the pipe's knackered anyway so what we've got to do, we'll get this out, and I'll show you another bugaloo we've got to get out. Because, we not, might not be able to bleed these through. So there you go, there's the fitting out. There you go, you can see it's even rusty inside. What a mess. So the next thing we're going to do, is try and get the bleed screw out. Now this is tricky to film, and it's also tricky to get into. So I'm going to get this out of here and see if we can free off the bleed screw. Right. <clears throat> we need to get the bleed screw out so we can bleed this caliper pro properly. However, this might be in our favour if it doesn't come out because now we've taken the pipe out we can see there's no fluid leaked out of this because it can't get air back in, if you see what I mean. It do, it, it'll just hold fluid in so fingers crossed if this doesn't come out we still won't have air problems but you really, really really need to get the the screw out and they are notorious to get out they're buggers to get out you can see the fluid sp sprayed out there so cross your fingers and let's see if this will come out now I couldn't really hit it on the end like I wanted to right there you go look at that A good socket, a good tight fitting socket, and away you go. Now you can see fluid coming out because air's getting in. So that's all right though, because it, 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 it's coming, it's coming off eventually. There you go. We'll replace the bleed screws. Yeah, they're a bit of a mess, eh? They look like the originals as well, don't they? Anyway, we'll replace those. So the next thing is to take off the brackets that's holding the pipe on to the chassis down here. There's two little brackets that are held on by <laughs> Phillips screws. <laughs> Ooh, hang on, I'm on zoom. Well, not on zoom. But those brackets will be notoriously difficult to get off. We might have to uh, chop them off and hold the pipes on with cable ties for it. Now, to do that here in Canada, in Quebec, is now illegal. You can't use cable ties, tie wraps, to hold brake pipes on. You know why? Because we did it once, we've been doing it for years. But we use a very broad uh, uh, tie wrap. 
And the, kid, and the inspector says, no, no, they're illegal. I said, since when? He says, oh, a few weeks ago. I said, why? He says, um, because they're not UV stable. I said, they're under the car. Yeah, no, but he said, uh, they're not UV stable. I says, so I said, well, that's a pointless rule, isn't it? Who sits up making these rules? Anything's better than nothing, in my opinion. No, we have to use those little P-clips. I'll, I'll show you which, what they look like. Right, so these are the chaps here. Metal with the rubber insert. These are the ones I prefer. But you can also use these little ones. Now, of course, I don't have 3 sixteenths to do this pipe, but that's just an example. These aren't so good because when you put a self-tapping screw in, you have a tendency to twist the plastic and it looks awful. Now, top tip. Here we go. There are some mounting points on the axle where these brackets go. Now, nine times out of ten, the screw doesn't come out, you know, the, the self-tapper doesn't come out, it'll snap. So what you've got to do is sort of drill to one side and put this back in. Never ever <laughs> drill through the axle tube to put these in with a self-tapping screw. It's not good, you'll have leaks all over the place. Uh, <laughs> I bet somebody's done it. <laughs> I know, you know, put your hands down. But, um, uh, so that's all it is really to do a brake pipe. I'll show you, uh, you know, what we have to do to make a brake pipe. But I'm going to take my time and get all these bits off, measure up the pipes, and I'm going to do the other side as well because God knows, you know, you know the other side's going to be just as bad. You know it. It's, it's, it's one of them things, just do them as a pair. What the axle one is over the back, I don't know. But it's not part of the job description, but we can't drive home with no brakes. Well, we've <laughs> been driving around for the last few years with no bloody back brakes. I don't know what the difference is. Right, let me get this off and we'll come back and show you how to do pipes. <laughs>